A very good morning to all of you. And uh, the Let, uh, Let There Be Light program is here because we are thinking on you who is suffering. Yes, we are here because of you who is desperate, you are alone, you have your family completely broken, you have seen your dreams and everything that you fought for uh, throughout your life, uh, vanishing, going away, disappearing from you. You see your life going uh, in a very difficult situation and the worst of all, you understand that you have no strength to overcome this problem. You know how many people are at this very moment, at this morning of Saturday, they are broken, they are desperate because they do not know where they sh their children are. They do not know where the spouse is. They do not know what they can do in order to fix a problem they are going or they are having with their health. They do not know how to solve the problem. My dear friend, I'm here to tell you that you can put an end to that suffering. You can put an end to all this torment that you have been going through and everything will depend on you. You will understand more throughout this program. Just pay attention to what you are going to watch now. Having faith gave me hope on times of trouble, especially in moments where I was alone. Faith in God helped me to realize that there's someone much more greater that even when everyone's not there, he's there for me. And it helped me to really persevere. My life today now is a blessing. I'm able to literally live life and be happy with everything that comes my way. I'm able to smile because I know that despite what, everything I'm going through, I'm able to get through it. It's not a thing that brings me down. I know where I'm going. I know who I am as well. My life's been transformed for five years or so. Learning about faith helped me to understand that I'm not alone in situations. With faith, I was able to see myself in a different way as opposed to see myself down because I see myself through God's eyes that I'm gonna be able to overcome anything that I go through. My life before coming to the Universal Church, it was very sad. I was broken inside due to the fact that from when I was really young in my household, it wasn't a nice place to be in. My mom wasn't really around like that, but when she was around, because she was going through a lot of baggages in her life, a lot of trauma, a lot of the time when she would express herself to me and my siblings, it was very aggressive. It was very sad as well. And a lot of the time she had to work hard, especially because like there wasn't a lot of things going on in terms of income in the household. There was a moment in time in which my parents, they weren't in a not so good place. And that's when I couldn't really see my dad anymore. I started to change the way I saw my mum. I started to see her in, with bad eyes and I started to become very rebellious. I started to have grudges towards her to the point at the age of 12, that's when I said, I'm not gonna live with her anymore. So I moved out of my mom's house and I lived, started to live with my dad because I saw that my relationship with him was much more closer. At school as well, I was being bullied. So I was very insecure with how I looked, with who I was. Because of the different words that were said to me, like you're a failure, you're ugly, all these different things that were happening in my childhood. I never really saw myself in the most positive light even if people could give me compliments, it was never enough to make me feel happy. It was never enough to make me feel like I was actually somebody or I was good at something. I would internalize everything. I wouldn't express what was going on. And because I was bottling up inside, a lot of the time I would be very upset, very angry as well. So I started to develop sort of grudges because I never felt like I was loved. I felt very neglected. I felt very sad a lot of the time. I started to see that even in my mind, I was becoming more depressed than ever. Around a lot of people in general, even with family members, I would act like as if everything's normal, I'm happy, I'm fine, there's nothing going on. But behind closed doors, I would be crying there, crying myself to sleep, and I became very suicidal as well. One of the worst moments of my life is when I was in school and it was like I couldn't even contain all the emotions that I had internalized inside me for years. I literally burst into tears. I remember speaking to a teacher in regards to, I don't know why I'm crying, I don't know why I'm upset, but that's how I felt. I couldn't even describe everything that was inside of my heart. I found out about the Universal Church through someone in school. They invited me to the youth group. There was this particular event and I came and I thought it was quite interesting because there was a testimony there of someone speaking about some of the things that I was going through. 
and they said to them on the mic that literally they overcame. So I thought to myself, okay, that's interesting, that's different, that's something I've never heard before. So to find that there was a solution within the church made me think, okay, there's something about this place that's different compared to other places I've ever been to. The Universal Church means to me home, a place of belonging, a place where no one's gonna judge you and where you're actually truly gonna find God, the real God that's gonna help you. Learning how to use my faith really helped me to realize like, Life is very simple. It's just a matter of me just obeying the word of God and that would just change everything. When I was put into practice, the advice that I was hearing in the Universal Church in terms of my internal issues, it was quite hard because it was a thing of letting go of what was actually inside of me and having to actually really deal with the reality of who I really was. That was something I didn't want to face for a very long time. But once I truly did, that's when I actually saw freedom and saw that inside of me, I could actually be the person that God actually wanted me to be. I started to see that the one thing that I was missing was the Holy Spirit because I lacked peace, I lacked that fulfillment. And I knew if I didn't have that fulfillment inside of me, that later on, everything that I let go of, everything that I overcame, that eventually there will be expiry date and I would go back. So once I understood that, I said, I'm gonna fight for God to be inside me, to have that permanent change inside of me instead of something that's just temporary for a little while. So I fought for the Holy Spirit, I sought God. I basically put into practice the word of God, but I started to also invest in knowing God for myself. I would read his words, I would come to the church services and I would be quite sincere, ask questions as well. And I started to see that from inside of me that God was literally there. I started to see his character within me and one Sunday morning, he confirmed that he was inside of me. Having the Holy Spirit, I could see that I'm more of a peaceful person. I'm not angry, I'm not insecure. When I look at myself, I believe in who I am. I'm happy at the person that I see. I'm not a person that runs away from the deep issues. I literally face every challenge, especially internally inside of me. And I do it with God, I don't do it alone. And inside of me, I have that strength that no matter what ha happens, what comes my way, I know that I will overcome. Today, being a universal person, I'm able to help people to establish a relationship with God and to also see for themselves this God that is ready and willing to help them in everything that they go through. The identity I have now is literally based on my faith that I have in God. I look at my life and I'm actually proud of who I am. I'm happy that I've established this confidence, this self-esteem in myself that I was searching for for a very long time and I have my own identity. I don't even have the desire to kill myself. I love the life that I live and I'm happy to even share that with others that are, were going through the same situation that I was going through back in the day. I'm even studying in university and I'm in my last year and I can see that I'm actually accomplishing, I'm doing quite well for myself. There's even certain opportunities in jobs that I could have never imagined that I would be able to receive, but it's through my power of faith that I'm able to receive that. My relationship with my mom is completely different. God has given me wisdom and even guidance on how to build the relationship with my mom which took a bit of time, but eventually we got there. I'm able to speak with her. I'm able to be with her friend. I know that it's a genuine love that I have for her and the genuine love that she has for me as well. My relationship with my parents is really good now. They're actually friends and they could actually like be around each other and actually speak to each other and there won't be any issues. The most important thing that I have is the Holy Spirit, is my relationship with God. And I can see having a relationship with God has helped me not only to conquer, but helped me to literally just carry on in life and push through everything. If God's with me, that's literally enough <laughs> for me. And I'm grateful to have this opportunity that I had in Universal Church. Waking up, having breakfast, taking the kids to school, working, having lunch, cleaning the house, resting, and the next day we do it all over again. We live in a daily routine, otherwise our lives would be a mess. However, when it comes to routine, there is a danger that haunts the soul. Going to church, praying, singing, listening to the sermon. Therefore, I have fulfilled my role as a Christian. On the following Sunday, this happens all over again. This is where the expression going on autopilot comes from. This term is often used in aviation. With the modernization of airplanes, the autopilot mode greatly facilitates the life of pilots. However, this is not always reliable. 
This is what happened with the Air France Flight 447. The journey was going well, but after three hours of flight, the airplane started to show signs of problems with its sensors, which disabled the autopilot mode. At that moment, the flight captain was not in the cockpit. The co-pilots tried to control the situation whilst they tried to call the captain. However, their lack of experience meant that they made wrong decisions in his absence. The captain re-entered the cockpit when the airplane had started to fall and turned upside down abruptly. There was no time left for anything else. The airplane plunged into the sea. When we are used to doing the same thing over and over again, it is like we are activating our autopilot. It is at this time that we are more vulnerable to the devil, because in a moment of distraction, he can launch his attack. By the time we try to regain control, there is no time left. There are many people in the church and in the work of God who are doing everything on autopilot. They know what to do and how to do it, but the pleasure they had at the beginning is non-existent. They believe they are still standing, but in fact they are falling like an airplane without a pilot. We must be careful with successes, lack of battles and moments of glory. These usually lead us to a place of inertia. This is why the life of a Christian is made up of battles and tribulations, because these moments demand more of us. This is when we pray more, fast more, and seek the help of God more. Remember, a calm sea never made a skilled sailor. And how many times people, they think there's no way out for the problems they are going through. The testimony, the real story that you were just watching is proving to you that he, your problem, your suffering, or whatever you are going through that is not allowing you to be happy, you can overcome this. You can, yes, you can reach the goal that you are looking for if you are using your faith. We have a good example also in the Bible that talks about two sisters, Mary and Martha. They had a very serious problem to, with their brother who was extremely sick and he ended up dying. And in meanwhile that they called Jesus and Jesus was coming, was coming to the city and this man called Lazarus ended up dying, uh, Jesus came and told them something extremely important. Didn't I, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? This is written in the book of John chapter 11, verse 40. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Listen to me. You, maybe I don't know you. Maybe I never saw you. Maybe it is the very first time that you are looking to me and you are watching me and you are listening to what I'm saying. I don't know what your financial problem is. I don't know the difficulties that you are going through in life. I don't know maybe what is going on inside of your heart, how your family has been at the moment. But I do know what is written here. As it happened with the testimony that you were listening, I know if you believe if you believe, you can also see the glory of God. You can also change your life. And these are not just beautiful words. This is what I've been witnessing at Universal Church daily, where we have daily services and the church has its, all, its doors open every single day. And people who sincerely have been using faith, their lives have been transformed. And if you want to know more about us, you can give us a call to the number that you can, you can see there on your screen. You can give us a call and we are going to talk to you. We are going to add your name if you want in our prayer book. And according to the word of God, we are going to give you uh, an advice. I would like also to share what this woman 
together with the daughter wants, they want to share with us. Pay close attention. Tears are a normal human response to different emotions such as grief and happiness. A mother can cry with joy for her child because for the first time he said, Mommy. Because for the first time he took his first steps. Or because she is happy to see him graduate. But unfortunately, the reasons for the tears can be because she has to visit her beloved child in prison or in the hospital or because she discovered that he is involved in drugs, or because he has become aggressive, or simply because of the concern for her child's future. Mother, why do you cry? I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. Keep a tissue with you, and every time that you cry for your child, use it to collect your tears. Then bring this tissue to place on the altar, and we will say a special prayer for mothers. On Mother's Day, Sunday the 12th of May at 9.30 a.m. at 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool. or at your nearest universal church. God will heal you and your family. Hello everyone, may God bless you abundantly. Here I have with me uh, Miss Faf, I have here Sarah as well. And today uh, she will share with you what was, let us say, something that was concerning her regarding her daughter. Uh, Sarah, so Miss Fafo, share with us here with these mothers who are listening to us now. What was the situation that was worrying you with Sarah? And then what did you do and how is today? Hi, everyone. Uh, it's me, Fafo. And as you can see, my daughter Sarah here with me. Um, before Sarah was, um, was having that um, kind of attitude, um, like she didn't open herself she was very close she had anger issue and even she disrespect she disobey us her parents especially as a mom and um that makes me worry so much because as her like when it comes the, the other side that she's the youngest in my i have other kids and she is the youngest in my family and it's, it makes me worry too much because when I look to her age, it's, that's not, it's unacceptable the way she is. And then when I started using my faith, like putting what I received from the word of God as a mom, fight for the kids, for, for their kids, fight for the salvation of my family. That's where I started seeing God's movements in my family, especially her. I started seeing her moving forward. I started seeing change in her life, you know, and she started um, attending things of the church like YPG, even the um, evangelize, things like that. And now today, as you can see, Sarah is here with me. Her life is transformed. Um, she had the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, and she's a blessing. I mean, so Miss Vaku, you can see that um, there was a change happening. And what is a advice that you have for a mother who is listening to us, who is watching us now, uh, what do you have to say to a person who is going through the same? And um, if you are watching this video now, you are the mom out there suffering because of your children going through situations, the same ha things happening in your, in your family, your children, as you can see here with my daughter, everything is possible with God. What is impossible to us, there is a way out. There is a solution, but only Jesus Christ can transform. If Jesus did in the life of Sarah and in my family, 
he will do the same in your life and in your children. So I would, I would like to invite you, come and join with us the Mother's Day on this coming Sunday, the 12th of May, 10 a.m. in the morning. And you will see the blessings of God in your family and your children. Praise God. So here it is an invitation for you, you who are going through the same or something similar. Well, uh, the same that God is doing, did, and he's doing in Miss Fakus family, definitely he's going to do in your life as well. May God bless you all. Thank you very much. And as you could see, Faf and Sarah, mom and daughter, today they can share with us what happened before, but how life is today. And tomorrow, Sunday, the 12th of May, we have the Mother's Day. And unfortunately, should be a day for happiness, should be a day for uh, mothers to be happy with the presence of their children. But unfortunately, as I was saying, for some mothers, it's a day of torment. You are a mother and maybe you don't know about your children for a long period of time. Maybe your children left and until today, you don't know where your children are. You have no information. The few informations you have, it's uh, because there's a friend or someone in common who said, I saw, I heard about your daughter, your son. But there you are at this moment and you do not know what you can do to make the relationship with your children better, to see your children moving forward and being better, to see your children being blessed. You know, I have here in my, in my hands the prayer of an afflicted mother that is written in the book of Luke chapter 1. You know, this, this, this flyer here uh, has a sincere prayer, a prayer that Bishop Carlos and we all we are going to say tomorrow Sunday in, the, in this special day, the Mother's Day, we are going to seek the Holy Spirit. We are going to listen to the Word of God, obviously. But there will be a special moment in the service that we are going to dedicate to all mothers. So if you are a mother or you know a mother that is going through serious problems because of their children, invite them. Invite this woman, invite your mom to be with us. And as soon you are coming to the church, you can come today. You can pass by today in the church. Or as soon you arrive at the church tomorrow, before the service starts, ask to one of the assistants, pastor, someone that you are going to, to be there. And you will ask them, can you please give me the flyer to, to write my request? the name of my children, if you want, to be presented in the prayer. Because as Jesus has transformed Faf's uh, life together with Sarah's life and the relationship between mom and daughter, it was restored and is blessed today. I believe that God can also hear your prayer and bless your family, bless your children and restore your house. So tomorrow, 9.30 a.m., we also have 7.30 a.m. We have 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. But uh, and all our churches so, uh, throughout Australia, they will be doing exactly the same thing. True faith, intelligent faith, doesn't mourn, have regrets, or get easily excited. True faith is tough and resilient like steel, just like righteousness. This is the only faith that pleases the Most High, who isn't fooled by the pleadings of an emotional heart. Whoever believes makes the effort to act their faith. They take steps of courage that look foolish in the eyes of the world, but that's how they end up seeing amazing wonders. The Lord gave us an example of this when He spoke to a fig tree in front of His disciples. The Lord Jesus is the author and finisher of faith, which means that He created faith to be a tool of communication between Himself and mankind. It's impossible to approach Him without faith. Like an invisible bridge, 
It leads us to his throne of justice and makes us righteous. How can we find it? The simple fact of hearing and meditating on the Bible's teachings enables us to absorb the spirit of the word, which is the spirit of faith. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10.17 The Lord Jesus Christ is the word made flesh, and his spirit is the spirit of faith. By listening to the word with humility, the spirit of faith immediately springs into action and brings about the faith that seems like foolishness to those who are lost. UCKG.org.au is the website where you will find everything that we are doing daily. Universal Church has its doors open every single day and every day we have services available for you and we are here to help you exactly exactly what you heard. We are here to help you. You may say, but oh, Ricard, how are you there to help you? You want something in exchange. Yes, I do want something in exchange. I want you tomorrow to come here with me and do what the other people they have done. Share the testimony, the greatness of God, what he has done in your life. No matter who you are, no matter your religious background, no matter the country where you were born, no matter your social condition, if you are going through a problem, God he can help you, can hear your voice, and he can transform your life. And this was very clear throughout this program. Tomorrow, Sunday, we are going to say this prayer on behalf of the mothers and also we are going to intercede on behalf of all families where we are going to ask for family to be transformed, to invert the situation of alcohol, drugs, addictions, sicknesses, divisions, coldness, separation, divorce, to invert the situation of suffering into salvation, victory, healing, prosperity. And this, my dear friend, is what we believe that God can do in the life of those who believe in him as it's written. Did I, not tell, did I not say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? And my dear friend, we believe. I believe, even if you say, I don't have a big faith, my dear friend, I believe and I will be uniting my faith with yours. Here in Liverpool, 153 Northumberland Street, here in front of Liverpool Plaza, very close to the Westfield. God bless you all. See you tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Univa Video, a road content of faith at the palm of your hand. Here we are going to teach you how to subscribe to the plans available so that you can access www.univavideo.com. Here you are going to select the plans and for $5.21, you can get two screens at once. And for $6.59, you can get four screens at once. Now you press subscribe, insert now your location, followed by your phone number. After that, we are going to go to the payment method. So there, we have the options to add your card. So first, you type your name, second box, your card number, the expiry date, and the CVV. And after you complete this, you are ready to go. And once this is done, you can sign in again. And that's it. You are ready to explore a vast content of faith. Now, if you have an Android platform, or if you have an Apple device, you can also search for the app Univo Video. And so for this, you follow the same steps to subscribe like we've showed you before. By typing in your email address, your name, your password. Your card details, and that's it, you are ready, set to go. And watch this great content that's going to build your faith. Enjoy.